its height of greatness, the Hotel Lafayette was considered one of the 15 finest hotels in the country. Originally planned to greet the visitors to the Pan American Exposition in 1898, the red brick and white terracotta French Renaissance style building boasted seven stories of rooms with electric lighting, hot and cold water in all bathrooms, and telephones in all rooms. However, financial problems delayed its opening until 1904. This master achievement, once considered the best that science, art, and experience can offer for the comfort of the traveling public, boasts notoriety for a second reason, Louise Blanchard Bethune. The Hotel Lafayette's architect was the first professional woman architect in the country. She was also the first female member of the American Institute of Architects and the first woman to be made a fellow of the AIA. After years of neglect, Buffalo developer Rocco Termini undertook the massive project of bringing this historic beauty back to life. The building was almost demolished when Termini took the reins of the Renaissance of the Hotel Lafayette. A lot of people say I'm crazy. <laughs> and sometimes I, I think after the daunting task that we have before us, sometimes I agree with them. But this is the last French Renaissance building left in Buffalo. And it was designed by Louise Bethune, who was the first female architect. And I really thought that was something worth saving for Buffalo. Because of Bethune's um, impact and Bethune's authorship of that building, I mean, it will be a national treasure. Of course, it's already on the national uh, landmark. It already is a national landmark. Um, I think that what uh, the city of Buffalo is doing through Earl and, and Rocco is they're making a major contribution to the national landscape by preserving her opus. Now listed on the National Register of Historic Places, the Hotel Lafayette is a city within a city. It has 270,000 square feet, which have been recreated as home to one and two bedroom apartments, a boutique hotel, five restaurants, a bakery, a florist, a gift shop, and a woman's dress shop. The restoration, undertaken by hundreds of highly skilled craftspeople, artists, and contractors, used many of the old world techniques that were used in the original construction. It was a painstaking and patient labor of love to recreate each breathtaking architectural detail. From restoring crystal chandeliers in the ballroom to recasting ornate plaster beams. Yeah, this is not a construction project. People say, oh, you're doing the construction at the Lafayette. This is a restoration project, and it's very difficult. Uh, for instance, we're restoring all the chandeliers. There's only two or three people in this area that uh, will restore chandeliers, so we've distributed the chandeliers to each one of them so that we can get them back in a timely fashion. Same thing with stained glass. We have over 80 stained glass windows here. There's four or five people in Western New York to, to do them, and we've distributed to them. Uh, same thing with plaster work. Plaster is a very, uh, uh, it's a, a really a, a, a job that nobody does anymore, and there's very few people that, that continue to do it, making molds for all the plaster. All these things take a long time, and it was difficult trying to find people. It took me almost six months to get all the team put together. <laughs> 